all my friends. Um, uh, to to be able to live in the spirit and accomplish everything that God has called us to do in this life and to live the life of Christ and to develop the fruits of the spirit such as forgiveness as I've been spoken about in here and also to stay guarded and have the shield of protection through discernment we need to pray that's number one jesus prayed a lot um, he prayed he went from the battleground to the holy ground to spend time with his father and prayed he would never have been able to have that um, that calling on his life and be able to do everything he did of the healing healings and the teachings and the fantastic things he did here on earth if he didn't pray and have intimacy with his father that's the most important thing uh, pr to pray is actually a conversation with we have with god is intimacy with our maker so when we worship God he wants us to know who he is some people just worship him and sing like a robot they used to sing the songs they used to raise their hands in church and they say amen and they even close their eyes but many people don't know Jesus Christ intimately and to be a follower of Christ is not about fulfilling your calling is first of all to create this relationship with Jesus that's number one for God because everything God did and does is based on love Bible says that God so much loved the world that he sent his son Jesus Christ not to condemn us but to give us eternal life so God didn't send Jesus to judge us or condemn us everything God has made everything God gives is come is coming from a source of love and he wants us to be the same to him he wants us to worship him because we love him and how do we love him if we don't know him so you have to create space in your life for intimacy with Christ to get to know him deeply to spend time the Bible speaks so much about prayer I love prayer is an awesome thing it's like a muscle that you exercise because it's about discipline in the beginning you will you will experience if you're not used to pray um, every day you will experience when you start doing it that it's something pulling you away from that intimacy with Christ it could be your thoughts about food what you're gonna buy what you're gonna do tomorrow uh, you know simple things that is distractions and maybe you in the middle of a prayer get a thought that oh I should have a sandwich or maybe I should just text this or look at this in on YouTube before I start praying or maybe I should just go out and grab a cup of coffee you know stuff like that it's very important that we learn to discipline our flesh and submit under God because he says in his word that when you pray go into your intimate room with Christ and shut the door and be alone with Christ in your room and God will hear from heaven I learned to pray from my mother she is an awesome prayer warrior every night when I went to bed 
I saw my parents on their knees praying for all of us every night before they went to sleep and every morning when I came up they were reading the Bible for each other and praying so I'm being grown up by with that role model and it's I'm so grateful for it every time I called my mother when I was a youth and I had some problems or you know I called her and then she always answered okay when I hang up the phone I will go to my room I will kneel down before Jesus and I will I will pray she solved all the problems in this life through prayer so I learned that from her to take everything in this life up to God he wants that he cares about every need every little detail which school are you going into what what kind of job do you want what kind of husband or wife are you going to marry he wants us to invite him in to every detail of our life because he wants fellowship and intimacy that's why he made us from the beginning to have a family we are his kids and he wants to take us on his lap and he wants to tell us secrets sometimes prayer is about waiting on God it's about listening and learning to discern his voice the Bible says my sheep hear my voice and another voice they do not follow so when you know his voice is because you spend time with the Shepherd you learn to discern how should you discern if you're not spending time with him you will you will easily be deceived so that is one thing then you will learn like I said to take everything in your life that is bothering you instead of gossiping uh, getting into fear or critical thoughts you go on your knees and you pray for those difficult situations in your life you pray for your economy you pray for your health you pray for your family you pray for your friends you pray for your church you pray for your pastor your leadership your nation you pray for everything that's bothering you when we watch the news as Christians Bible says that don't fear bad news don't fear it why shouldn't we fear it because we are with God and he wants us to know ahead what's coming that's one thing the other thing is that he has called us to intercede for everything that happens in this life prayer is an awesome thing it can change a nation it can change a city it can change a system a political system if God's people went on their knees and prayed more than they talked we will see a totally different world yeah I really believe in prayer I'm so trained to pray now and I've been long seasons alone with God sometimes because I didn't have a choice and I know God has given me those seasons of loneliness to uh, build that strong intercession intercessor um, in me to be a prayer warrior to go to him because I didn't ha I didn't have a choice many times so when I was alone I spent much of my time in prayer and then it developed a, a love relationship between me and Jesus and I'm inviting you to come into this in the room with Christ today to this holiest of the holiest when they lived under the in the Old Testament they had a tabernacle that only the high priest Aaron could go in before God one time a year and now when Jesus has crucified himself for us and taken us all, taken all our sins and resurrected that veil 
is gone between man and God. So we can all do what Aaron did. We can all enter into the holiest of the holy. And maybe you don't know what to say in there, how to behave. You know, you should be honest. You should not just say a lot of words. You should speak like he is your friend who is in your room. And then you should tell him your secrets. And then we have thanks. We thank him. We worship him. We honor him. And then we have waiting on the Lord, listening to his voice where you are completely quiet. I believe it's healthy to sometimes just be quiet. And in the beginning, it's a practice that takes a little time because you will experience, as I said, your mind will go in a lot of different directions. But if you just focus on Jesus as the bridegroom, and you are his bride and the love he offers you and he wants to tell you how much he loves you he is in love with you he's in love with me and he wants us to express our love to him so it's a fellowship of love a love relationship like in the songs of solomon where the bride and the bridegroom speaks highly in love towards each other. It's a picture not only about so uh, Solomon and Sulamit, but it's also a picture about us, his bride, and Christ, who is coming back for his bride. So God wants us to come into that table that he has set for each and one of us. That is prayer to sit with him because he wants to sit with us. He wants to say secret to you and me. He wants to restore our lives through prayer, our self-esteem, our identity, give us revelations, give us peace, give us joy. When you're in that intimacy, fear disappear because there's only peace where God is. There's no room for fear there. There's no room for confusion. Suddenly everything becomes clear. And when you're in that room or waiting on the Lord, He will maybe show you another side of yourself that need healing. He will show you maybe when you were a little boy or a little girl what you lacked and how He look at you, what He wants to do for you with you in this life it's only love so he wants you and i but we have to come by ourselves free, free will by love we have to come before him because we want to spend time with him it's not enough to be in the church and pray but it's that fellowship of love and intimacy with Christ that he is waiting for us in that inner inner room inner courtroom he is standing there waiting for you and me because he's always here God has never left us it's we who take steps back we who get distracted by other things in life he cannot leave us because he cannot deny himself he's always there so the, it's we who are taking steps away from him. We choose other things in our day. We choose TV more, we choose the media, the phone, go to the gym, you know. We choose all these things for our bodies, uh, for entertainment, for our hobbies. But God shouldn't be uh, the last one we search. He should be number one. He should have the best of our day. Every morning when I wake up, I start the day with praising Jesus because he deserves the best of everything in my life. I've given my life to him and I want him to have the first time of my day where I worship him and he's my husband. I, I love him, I talk to him, 
I pray all the time. I pray inside even when I'm asleep. I'm praying, I think, because it's like an engine that is just ongoing, where my focus is towards Him. I want to hear His voice. I want to spend time with Jesus, who I love. And I want to sit with His feet and learn and be more and more like him and also we have um, warrior prayer where you pray against darkness where Jesus will teach you when you are in that intimacy about your authority your armor in Christ Jesus so you will know that you have been given his name you have been given this mighty authority against darkness in this world. So we can bind and we can loosen. We have been given this authority to speak to darkness, to demand darkness, to leave people and to leave our lives. So that's the authority prayer that God wants each and one of us to come into too. Many people doesn't use their authority because they don't know so they just pray a simple prayer and maybe the enemy is torching their lives and they don't know how to pray um, that away because they're not using their authority but God wants you and I to understand what's been given to us what is our identity our weapons our armor and how to use it and also the fellowship, the love, the waiting on Him, listening to His voice. I journal a lot. I sit in my waiting time and just close my eyes and focus on Jesus. It's not like the meditation in the world where you empty your brain. No, it's focusing on Jesus. Love on Him. And I'm just sitting there, closing my eyes, thinking about how much I love Jesus, what he's done for me. I can have some worship music on, but sometimes that also is disturbing to me. Sometimes I like to have it completely quiet. And it's good exercise because it's so much noise in this life. So we can't stand, be quiet now. We need to have a radio or TV or music or phone on all the time. And it could be distractions that hinder us from hearing the voice of God. So it's good to, to learn to be completely quiet sometimes and just listen to his voice, that little, little voice that comes deep down inside of you and me. That is God's voice and to be able to discern. And then I write thoughts because God comes through thoughts he comes through dreams visions pictures and that voice and then I write it down what I, f I uh, what I feel he speaks to me about and I could see pictures when I'm quiet and I write that down sometimes I paint the pictures and they become prophetically it's prophetic pictures that God shows me so it's so many depths in the prayer life. It's so many deep levels. You can just keep going in every direction in prayer. And when you learn to love prayer, you just want to be in prayer. I understand like people who are nuns and monks who, who are, you know, uh, spend so much time alone with God. I can understand some of it because when you when you uh, have the discipline in prayer and you come into that fellowship with Christ it's not uh, something that you feel you need to do you come to him because you love him that's another level you come to him not only when you need help you come to him because you want to sit with him you don't need anything you just want to be close to his presence and that's the love, the love relationship he wants us all to experience. This is the, the bride that Jesus is coming back to 
the bride that loves Jesus, that is in love with him, that knows him, that spends time with him. And in that love, God changes us. He heals us. He changes our mind. He changes how we look at people. We start to see people with his eyes. Yeah, because we are becoming like him when we spend time with him. So I just want to encourage you to to go deeper into prayer, to spend more quality time. And a lot of fantastic things will happen in our lives when we pray. I believe in revival. I believe that the church will raise up in this time. I believe breakthroughs for our families, our nations. But nothing of that is going to happen if we don't pray. God has called his people to pray, not just sit and watch the news and say, I, 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 that was bad. We are the solution to the problems in this world. We have the weapons because almost everything that happened in this life that we watch on news has a spiritual explanation. And we had to have the spiritual answer that is Jesus. So I'm inviting you to come into the holiest of the holy and create this deep relationship with Christ, the intimacy with him that will make you fall in love with him. And suddenly, bam, you've been in there for two, three hours and it felt like 15 minutes. That's how it is to be in the presence of God. You just want more and more and more and more because you've been filled. You've been filled every time you enter in and spend time with him and let him change you to be an intercessor. We're all called to be that. God bless you. Amen.